The history of the IGM is a long one, and we are fortunate to build on a great tradition of genetic medicine at Hopkins. Uh, it starts in the 1950s in the clinics with Victor McCusick and Barton Childs, two luminaries in our field, and in the laboratories with the work in the 60s and 70s of Dan Nathans and Ham Smith, Nobel laureates, and thereafter with Haig Kazazian and Barbara Mijan and other people who really uh, were doing cutting-edge research uh, in genetics. The overall goal of the IGM is to integrate genetics into all of medicine. We man uh, seven clinics. We have a genetics inpatient service and a very active consult service. Research-wise, the investigators of the IGM are very active in disease gene discovery, in elucidating the architecture of complex traits, in understanding the uh, regulatory language of the genome, in modeling human disease and model organisms and developing uh, innovative uh, new treatments for genetic disease. In the educational sphere, we have uh, four residency programs, one in categorical genetics, and then combined programs with medicine and genetics, pediatrics and genetics, and maternal fetal medicine and genetics. At the level of graduate students, we have a robust uh, human genetics uh, graduate program with 75 students and 65 preceptors. And uh, then we are very active in the education of medical students, our medical colleagues, and the lay public about uh, the rapidly developing, exciting activities in genetics. Myself is the head of the Center for Inherited Disease Research and Dr. Cutting is, and Dr. Chris Gokey came together along with Alan Scott at our Genetic Resources Core facility a couple of years ago to start brainstorming the idea of coming together to be able to um, really combine our resources and be able to tackle the issue of um, genomic medicine. The strengths that CIDR had to bring to bear were very much on the big data informatics side, but we needed to partner with a clinical group here in order to be able to offer clinical research testing, which is needed more and more right now because of the large effort to look into translational research. And I think that uh, between us we recognized that we had the ability to put together a, a high quality clinical genomic center that would not only replicate what's been done by many other institutions, but we could take it, we thought, one step further. Relying already on the uh, resources we have here at Hopkins, but the fact that we have other ones, including OMIM, which can help us in annotating variants that we find by genome analysis. And finally, we have the medical institutions with which we closely work with, and have the diagnostic lab and the molecular path lab has worked with clinicians over the years to develop tests. So we thought in many aspects, Working with CIDR, we could provide both a, a fertile ground for research and also provide, we thought, really top quality uh, exome level diagnostics that would, in addition to providing the sequencing data, provide high quality annotation of the variants that we find. The Greenberg Center for Skeletal Dysplasias is a wonderful center here at Johns Hopkins. We see patients with all forms of bone conditions and then we do clinical research related to those disorders in those patients. And we have educational outreach to trainees, to physicians in the community, and to families taking care of those individuals. In the epigenetics and chromatin clinic, we are able to see a, a large number of patients with uh, what we call the Mendelian disorders of the epigenetic machinery. And by doing so, we're able to learn how these patients are similar to one another uh, with the hope that this will teach us something about the function of epigenetics in, in the future. We use zebrafish as an intermediate model organism to allow us to study regulatory sequences and to allow us to manipulate the genome. The primary thing that we want to achieve is to, to gain a better understanding of the regulatory architecture of complex disease. To be able to, to use that research to discover novel prognostic, diagnostic, therapeutic tools would be the ultimate goal for my research group. So we're interested in neural cell fate decisions, which are the key transition points as cells start to differentiate into different types of neurons during development of the brain. What we'd like to do is get a better understanding of just how complex the brain is. And in order to do this, we need to get a really good map of how the stem cells, the progenitor cells within the brain, actually become the mature functional cell types. If you're looking for an environment in which you want to maximize your potential, 
maximize the possibility for connecting basic research with clinical research in the clinical environment and have a, a great place to live and potentially to raise a family or just feel like you have a, a, a true new home environment. Hopkins is a great place to be and Baltimore is a, Baltimore's a great city in which to, to do it. I chose to uh, take part in the Human Genetics Program because I think it's a program that provides really excellent training for translational work. And by that I mean we do really rigorous and excellent basic science, but it's oftentimes and frequently on clinically inspired questions. So both of the projects that I work on uh, were directly inspired by patients which we have seen here in the IGM. So my training experience here at the IGM has been great. Um, I wouldn't trade it for anything else. Um, I've learned a lot both here at the NIH as well as Johns Hopkins and um, I think that if I had to choose all over again, I would do it. Yeah, I agree. I think the training has been excellent. We have so many resources and so much wonderful mentorship here that questions and the facilities are terrific and really it's been a fantastic opportunity. I would tell a trainee thinking of joining the program to not to hesitate and to come here as soon as possible. Um, this is the sense of excellence. Um, advances are made in this place. Don't think twice. Come here. Agreed. Don't hesitate.